Where did she start? You're live. Hi, my name is London Sanders. And my name is Anaya Robinson. And this is the Betty Shabazz International Charter School Podcast. And today we're going to be talking about what do you think about bullying? About bullying, I think that it's not okay. I feel like people do it because they like don't know what to do with themselves or they're poor or they don't like this person for whatever reason. I believe that bullying is not the thing to do and people should change their ways and talk it out so that bullying is not a thing. I agree with you. And I also think people bully because certain people are not on their level. But I also think that if you know that that person isn't on your level, then maybe you should help them and guide them to the right path. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Do you think that, like, people, if they have, like, good grades, like, let's say I have an A and you have an F, do you think that people with good grades should help each other? Like, I have an A and I know you need help, that I should help you? Yes, I think that's a very good idea instead of bullying because bullying could get you into situations that you don't want to be in while helping you, In the other, on the other hand, would be, like, guiding them and um, – and guiding them to the right path so they can be on the same equation. I agree with that. You have a caller on the line, producer? You have a caller on the line. Uh, what would your question be for the podcast? Hi, who's this? What's your name? Where you calling from? Hi, who's this? What's your name? On yes. Hi, who's this? What's your name? And where are you calling from? Hello, my name is uh, Big Daryl, and I was listening in on your podcast, and I was thinking about bullying. So, bullying, I think it's just some people that they can bully their home. Some of these things, brother, other things are going on at home. Like, so, yeah, like things are going on at home, and they, they, they can out people at school and outside. You know, like, like if they see somebody that's stupid and they're like a nerd or something, they could pick a lemon and bully a lemon and it's not right just to get out the anger. So, it's like, Say you see somebody in the hallway and you just got angry, you know, you like pick on them or you show them in the locker or you give them a beat up with them. It's not okay. So they do it anyway. I agree with that comment. Um, but the example, I also feel like that if you have anger from at home, then you should like take it out when you get home because that's where the situation happened at instead of taking it out on someone that doesn't know anything about the situation because that can change relationships and love. I believe that. I also agree with the statement. I think that, like, I feel like shoving people in the locker is something that only happens in movies. But at the same time, I agree with what you're saying. Like, some people might bully another person because of something that's going on at home or something that disappointed them. But some people they just don't care. Like they just be on some and they just pick on people or be mean to people call their names like there's some people that sometimes people be scared of a bully or a bully is just somebody that just mean to you for no reason. I agree. And that is it for our first caller. Next caller you're gonna be up. What's your name? Where are you calling from? What's your name and where are you calling from? Your comment. Your comment. My name is Tamik. My name is Tamik I'm, I'm from I'm from the I'm from Delta, Chicago. And I was I was listening and bullying people are you saying some people try to lock them is like movie things. That happens in real life. Some people Think about killing themselves because people do things that can bully them like that. So, kill like them. I read that. I think, like, some people, when they get bullied, they, they do things that are not good. And I feel like that could be fixed if people would just simply work out their problems instead of doing things like what you said. I feel like people would just talk to each other and they could fix it instead of it becoming a bigger problem than it already is. Right, I feel like communication is key during um, a bullying situation because 
if you don't know what the problem is with somebody, then maybe you should ask. Or if you're, if you know that person is very upset, maybe you just stay away because you never know if they want to get through their bullying situation on their own or with somebody like knowing. Because maybe if you talk to them, they'll be like, "Hey, I have somebody to talk to about this situation." But if not, then I feel like just leave, like get out the way, and they're very angry so you should just avoid yourself from getting in a dangerous situation and that is it for our second caller thank you for calling to all our callers and the next topic is and the next topic is this Team Talent Contest. Um, it is every last Saturday of the month on September 30th. The next contest is on September 30th. And it's a Team Talent Contest. So people can do like, there'll be a group of teenagers and they will do like, whether that's singing or dancing or whatever. Um, that's what they would do. And you can win prizes. Yeah. Anyways, back to our topic of bullying. We, I have a question to ask. Do you think adults listen to us when we have ideas about bullying? I think parents, I think parents do, but Teachers, I think they hear it and they're like, oh, we can tell the principal about this or we can tell someone about this. And then it winds up being that they like don't really care and nothing happens and then bullying just continues. But I feel like parents listen because especially if it's about their own child, because it's like, I want my child to be bullied. But teachers, on the other hand, like they don't take into consideration what it would be like if their child if they had one was bullied i don't think they take that into consideration which is why bullying happens especially in the schools um i also i agree with that on the parents we have but um for the teachers we have i feel like they do listen to us majority of the time and they would um use things use our ideas to work out some things but if it doesn't work they stop taking suggestions because they feel like the more suggestions we have the more things are going to increase the bullying situation is going to increase instead of decreasing which we're trying to get the bullying situation to decrease instead of increase so i feel like teachers do take our opinions into their hands when it's time for us because we're the people who are increasing the bullying but at the same time they don't because they're trying not to have people in a bad situation uh i disagree i think that like you said sometimes teachers take things into consideration but I don't believe that all of the time, especially when it's mostly needed, teachers like seem to not care or they don't help the situation or it's just it's not like working how it's supposed to where the situation is fixed instead it's getting worse. And yeah, I think like when teachers get into it, I guess the situation just gets worse because no one's I have another question, but that was a very good opinion. But I have another question. Like, how do you feel about bullying in general? Not just school bullying or bullying that happens in a place where everybody is. How do you think people get over, like, social media bullying or different type of social bullying? I think they like either like block it out, like, you know, people on social media nowadays, all they say is, oh, I will block this person, I will block this person. But I think honestly, like, even though they say that they don't really care or like 
they're not really worried about it. They don't, they're actually like, they're actually like not really telling the truth. I feel like people, they will say one thing and then believe another. Um, what I think about bullying, like that's on mine and things. I feel like the bullying happens in person when they're around a group of people because they feel like they will get, they feel like they're famous for it or something like that. They feel like if they do it, the more popular they become around that variety of people. But regardless, you should always like try to lift people up and no matter what situation it is, because even if it depends on who you are, you still need to bring people up because you never know what if like that person becomes something in life. They're going to look back to their old days. Oh, you used to bully me. Oh, this thing used to happen back then. And I feel like you don't want that to happen to you. So back to the statement, treat people the way you want to be treated. You should treat them how you would be treated in that situation. I have a question for both of those. Have any of you ever been ever been bullied? Mm -hmm. Yes. What happened? Uh, resolve? How did I resolve it? I just like kind of like left the group because I knew that what was happening wasn't what's supposed to be happening. So I kind of like took myself away from that situation. And I like figured out who is like, who I should be around to get myself together. Me, um, on the other hand, me, um, I've been bullied before, but I didn't remove myself from the situation. If I have a problem with somebody, I will at least try to work it out with them first. So I brought to their attention that about how I felt getting bullied. And um, they took my opinion into consideration. And they were just talking to me about like how they would feel if they were in my situation. And um, if not, if they don't listen to your opinion, then I feel like you should take yourself away. Because some people that bully you might be people that you might really depend on in the future. And that's why you need to try to work it out with them at first, because you can always be friends. Uh, going off what the producer said, have you ever been the bully? I have, to be honest, I have. But um, eventually I started to like come to them and I became a leader around those groups because instead of them coming to my attention, I came to their attention and I talked to them about how they fit, how they felt from their point of view. And I just like slept on it and something just told me to stop because what if that was me in that situation? And then they're probably going home crying, thinking about what they should do like to their sales because they're getting Bully, so yeah. Okay, so you're about to be logged off of one of the platforms. So say goodbye and thank you for listening. Goodbye, thank you for listening. Thanks for listening. And your name again? My name is London Sandy, and my name is Anaya Robinson. And you're listening to the this is the Beige of Ass International Charter School podcast. Thank you for listening. Thanks thank for listening. Thank you for listening. And now you have the group one of the first Betty Shabazz podcast. Thank training. you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. So now you can see the whole whole thing. So I can pull it back so the whole world can see. Like, yo, no. So you are the were you the host or the producer? I we were the host. You were right, the host. We were hosts. London was the host. I was Zanaya, Zanaya. Yes. Zanaya was the producer. Zanaya on the left was the producer. London on the right. I'm sorry, did I say that right? London yeah. on the right. It, yeah, London on the right is the London is the producer. No, the London's host. on the left. You all said, how about that? 
London on the right is the host, and Zanaya on the left is the producer. I'm from on the right. You are. And uh, I am Jameer, and I am the director. So we're going to run a promo here right quick. Okay, they did a great job. So we're going to run a promo right quick. And um, oh, we have comments here too. We didn't see the comments. Oh, okay. That question was answered. So let me go back and uh, run a promo for the Teen Talent Contest so they can know exactly what we're talking about. All righty now. Where's the, there it is. Yes. Attention all talented teens ages 13 to 19. Are you ready to show the world what you've got? We're excited to announce the latest global virtual teen talent contest, where you win cash prizes and scholarships by performing your unique talent. Here's how to participate. 1. Record a 1-minute video of yourself performing your talent. 2. Upload the video, link in description or comment. Thank you for coming, London. 3. See you next submit week. your video by the right. deadline. We're looking for a wide range of talents, from singing and dancing to magic tricks and comedy skits. So whether you're a musician, an actor, or a chef, we want to see your unique talent. The top talents will be selected by a panel of judges and will be announced shortly after. So don't wait, start filming, and good luck. And this is the winner from last week. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, what's up, guys? What's up, guys? Once again, y'all, I'm pretty sure you know my name, but let's start all, all over again. My name is Rosalind Joseph, and I'm 13 years old. I was born, and I was ready to born in Toronto, Canada. Fix IX. And my passion has been always acting since I was a little kid because I really enjoyed the acting. It's like you, but it's another version of you. A fun fact about acting, it got specific performance, memorization work, all of that fun stuff. Anyway, without further ado, guys, let's just get straight to the video. What are you guys waiting for? What it was on Nick today? No, let's make it. <laughs> <laughs> so even funny. Because you're here in this video. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, <laughs> some peace. <laughs> Who did that? I'm coming with the belt. Watching 
love you on Windy City Live. Yes, we do. Tell us, how did all this ha happen? How did this come about? Well, I play me. I play Val Warner in Chirac, which is really cool. So when people see this movie, they are literally seeing Val, and I am a reporter in the movie. There you go. We talk about the violence, but what can we do personally? I think we got to be engaged, and I think engaged in a number of things in our block, in our home, in our neighborhood. We got to be engaged. We got to fight the issues. We got to fight a government that is abandoned. You know, whole communities on the south and the west side. Um, we got to fight a governor who's cut out every youth employment program, who's cut out violence prevention programs, who's abandoned um, our communities and the poor and the vulnerable. And I think we got to reach out to our brothers on the street and love them and respect them and help them, not just demonize them. I'll just say, like, first of all, history. I'm going to tell my jokes. It's young cat I'm 37 now. I started out almost 15 years ago. Elroy taking me under the name. Let me do some jokes here and there for the radio station and all that kind of stuff. I learned that no matter what you do and how much of a genuine heart you have and if you're coming from a good place, people are going to criticize if they don't agree with what you're doing. Yo, what's up? It's your man Tony Schofield from 106.3 Chicago's R&B, and you are watching men on higher learning. Now, I used to hang around with some men that was into some higher learning. It just wasn't that kind of higher learning, but I got myself together now, okay? What is it that you do in your quiet time, in your meditation time, that allows you to bring us the films that you do? I sit courtside the Mass Square Garden, world's most famous arena. Y'all ready? Here we go. Here we go. Hello, my name is Brandon Thomas. Hi, I'm Wilson Joyce. And this is the Betty Sebas Podcast. International Podcast. International Podcast. Or the BSA Podcast. I feel like what they did good was like, they, they kind of kept going with stuff. I mean, what they did bad was like, they kept stuttering in the middle of stuff. And like, wow, when I called, they chant me out while I was trying to speak. Yeah, so I was, I'm going to uh, head on what he said, too. So they were doing good at start, but London, she was, like, making, she was making, like, funny faces in the camera. I mean, if that's the thing that she likes to do, that's her business, but that's, I'm just saying, like, she, she could have just stayed professional. So uh, you all are going to be hosting and co-hosting next week. So you mentioned the stuttering. How can a person, when they're speaking, make sure that they don't stutter over their words or lose their train of thought? Think what would you say? You talk? Or sometimes people like to write things down. And sometimes for me, like if I'm about to do a presentation for school as a science project, I'll write down my notes and have what I need to say. But like, what would be your main subject on remembering things that you need to write down but you can't in that matter of time? So you can always just practice. You know what they say, practice makes perfect. All right. So that's a good point. Practicing what you have to say, write it down, think before you speak. And one thing that's helpful if you don't try to speak too fast, like if like you say, think before you speak, it's better if you pause rather than say, uh, oh, because then that makes you sound like you don't know what you're saying. So have you ever had a time where you had to speak before uh, an audience and you had to like memorize what you had to say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to lose before. Ah. I want, I that feels very good. I got a question for you guys. What if like in the amount of time that you have, 
what would be your number one go to if you if you can't memorize anything and like you have no notes or whatever? Most people have phones on them 24 7. So, like, if you don't got a phone, you, you have paper and pen. You're yeah, at school, so like, separate yeah. around. Yeah, some people like they have their phones set up and it's like a little prompter that you can have and you can just look at it and you can still look straight so it doesn't look like you're looking at a piece of paper. Okay, yeah, I, have, I, have, I have two more questions. Here. What do you guys think about the Team Talent Show? Well, the Team Talent Show, what I think about it is, I think about like, we can think, I think we could just show what, show different talents. Like, I want to see different people, see what different people's talents are. Mm -hmm. But what, and like, what, what, what do you think you guys need to be motivated? Just to stay on track. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I could just go outside or sit down somewhere and just take a good breather because sometimes everybody needs that. Sometimes when they just need to be alone and figure out what they got to do, I get it done or listen to music clubs. Um, so I have one question for you guys. Like, what would be your like a great to it and this would be about this? If you know that, like, if you see someone with the talent but they're too scared to do it, what would you guys think about that? Oh. I would definitely try to encourage, like if I see my friend and they're a really, really great singer, I would encourage them because some people have stay fright and they don't want to do things, certain things like come in front of a bunch of people and do things. So some people I've seen, they have their friend in the front row and their friend is just, che they're cheering them on just to uh, give them a little, a little closure, not closure, but they give mm -hmm. them some. Encouragement. Encouragement, yeah. And uh Wilson, what do you what do you have to say about that? I feel like if you're like it's like that, I would give I would, you could try to get better with it. Like like have people like have family members and you sit down and you practice in front of them and stuff like that. And I agree on what you said too. So like would you feel so like if you guys had a stage front, would you try to encourage each other or would you tell the person, like, and, and you don't like this one person, if they have stage fright and you feel sorry for them, would you just boot them off or would you like encourage them to like do your best? I would still encourage them because, but, oh, I'm sorry, you, you can go. I'm sorry. But if somebody you don't like has stage fright and you see them, because I know like some people, they will just laugh at them or boo them, but you would you wouldn't you wouldn't want nobody to do that to you so you just gotta think about what you gotta think about what you're gonna do be considerate yeah mm -hmm. good job excellent job. all right well thank you so very much and give the audience your name one more time and let them know my name is brandon thomas and i'm wilson joyce and and this is the bsa international charter school podcast Peace we're out See you next week Oh, ah. right. And, uh oh, that's a curse. Is it a touch screen? No, it's not a touch screen. What happened to the cursor? All right. It's right there. Great job. It's right there. And while Where the, is it? Where is it? Oh, there we go. I would like for our <laughs> director. Oh, there we go. Producer. All right. And thank you to our director. And give us your name again, director. And the director is me. Jeremy or Jones. All right. Congratulations. Great job. And we will see you all next week. Yay.